Hey guys, it is uh, Friday, June 16th, 2023, and I've decided because um, my two biggest problems in trading are that I over leverage and I over trade. So with that in mind, I've decided that I'm going to implement the ICT silver bullet model. Um, and I've added on one extra time so I can trade four times per day. Okay, so the extra time that I added on was um, it was going to be Asian Open. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to back test for the week of um, June 12th to June 16th um, all of these silver bullet setups that you could have found, um, including one that he doesn't mention, but it uses the same principles. Uh, and I'm just calling them all silver instead of silver bullet, just silver. Um, but I'm also, you're going to see also that I, I use this um, Tokyo Open or this 2000 to 2100, which is when Tokyo Stock Exchange opens, um, as another time. So four setups. So the four setup times are between 14 to 1500, which are which is your uh, PM silver. Then you have uh, 10 to 11. These are all uh, New York time, which is your AM silver. Uh, three to four, which is London silver, and then uh, 20 to 2100, 2000 to 2100, which is um, Asian silver. So the basic premise behind the silver bullet is that at this time, there should be either a fair value gap or an inefficiency that is formed during the setup time or prior to the setup time and then you are looking for liquidity uh, to target. So you're betting that price is going to come up and trade into an inefficiency and then go seek liquidity. So what I'm hoping for going forward is that if I limit myself to just these four setup times, that that will stop me from over trading and uh, limit my risk exposure. Um, because one of the things that ICT talks about is that it's easy, he has so many concepts that it's easy to get overwhelmed and he's really got so much that you could find yourself, and this is what I've really been doing, and he's, he reads my mind. Um, I've been over trading because, you, I mean, these fair value gaps, inefficiencies, liquidity, they're, they're happening all the time. So if you don't limit yourself to a model, you're going to end up over trading and that's what I've been doing for sure. Um, it's been a big problem of mine. So I'm hoping that with the silver bullet model um, that I have a pretty good grasp of that will limit my um, over trading. So let's go back through the past week and see how many times our silver bullet was set up. Now I'm just going to show you on the five minute time frame. Now when he actually describes the um, when he describes the video or the silver bullet setup, he just says to drill down to find a fair value gap. But in reality, any it's really any inefficiency. They're all the same. And you're just looking for where um, there's only a body of a candle, not a, not a, only one side of the marketplace was offered. Now, in his original video that he discusses silver bullets, he says mistakenly, he ends up correcting this later, that um, the fair value gap or the inefficiency should be formed during the setup time, but that's not true. He ends up saying differently later. In the original video, he, he definitely does mistakenly say that the, the inefficiency has to form during the same hour that you're entering in on, but that's not, uh, that's not what he says later on. Later on, he says that the inefficiency can form before, and indeed, what I will tell you is that most of the time, your inefficiency that you're that you're going to get in on a silver bullet entry, uh, from my back testing, it usually forms prior to the setup time. So the f one of the things that you'll have to do when you trade silver bullets, or I just call them silvers. When you trade the silvers, you you have to identify where you think the market's going to go and seek liquidity, because you're oftentimes going to have prior to the setup out the setup time or the setup hour, I'll just call it the setup time, you're going to have multiple inefficiencies that form either during the setup 
setup time or prior to the setup time. And only in a, a couple of examples in this back testing are you, you going to see that the silver bullet ultimately doesn't go in the direction of the overall trend. It, it usually does. So we'll start with our PM silver bullet that we had um, on. I, okay, I guess I will drill down for this one. So as you can see, uh, the, the, PM, the PM setup time is from 1400 to 1500 uh, New York local time, which I'm in central time, so this for me this would be one to two, not two to three. But anyways, um, as you can see, price formed a fair value gap, and then just prior to the setup time, and then traded into that fair value gap uh, a few minutes into the setup time. And so, had you gone short here, and I think he has a YouTube video up, or a Twitter video of this. So if you went short at the at the PM silver today. It delivered all the way actually down to this liquidity lower, but um, any of these liquidity points would have netted you a good profit. The AM silver bullet was pretty obvious. I mean, a big displacement on the equities open. And then between 10 and 11, you could have entered short here. Now, you could have covered on, the, on this first run down, but price ended up coming all the way back and then delivering the sell side liquidity. So usually you're going to see that the price does um, deliver the liquidity but not on literally every single setup but as you can see this was the draw down here. So our AM silver setup was this fair value gap that the equities open formed, uh, this inefficiency that price traded back into and then it started to seek liquidity immediately but but didn't find it so it came back up to the same uh, fair value gap which formed an inverted fair value gap on the silver bullet setup and then it finally delivered um, delivered so had you gotten in here this would have been 84 84 points on the NQ and to be clear I'm on NQ um, if you would have just gotten out on the first move down you could have gotten up to 67 points I imagine that probably happened too fast for you so if you had your stop your stop loss higher uh, and then it delivered in that first pool of liquidity. I'm going to say you probably reasonably here are looking at 80 points. Okay, and then so this one was not like the most enjoyable silver bullet setup, but it, it should have netted you a profit. Okay, the next setup that we had on Friday was the London silver bullet. So you can see that here we have a um, sell side inefficiency. You can see that because there's only the body of the candle. Now you also had a, a volume imbalance, imbalance higher, and either one could have been your um, could have been your silver bullet setup on London during the setup time, uh, which is the London opening hour. By the way, you could have actually used, believe it or not, this inefficiency. This is not making any so. You could have used even this inefficiency down here and you would have been filled on that. But let's assume that you saw the more obvious one, which was here. Um, what I've noticed with your London silver bullets is oftentimes, um, not every time, but oftentimes it's going to end up seeking, uh, like so here for example, our draw on liquidity on this London silver bullet was all the way up, up here. So our prior day's high. You can see, so... This was our London silver bullet drawn liquidity. And, you know, I, I don't know if it would have been reasonable to hold for for all of that. You can know the nearest profit target would have been 36 points. Now, had you held it all the way to equities open, that was over 100 points. Pretty crazy. Um, you do see that sometime in the pre-market, um, up around 620, we did have a deep retracement. But since I'm only going to be trading silver bullets now, I'm going to assume that the only way that you would have played this retracement is perhaps on a pyramid. So on a silver bullet model, he will sometimes pyramid. For now, I'm not really concerned with pyramiding. I just need to get some wins under my belt, to be honest with you. So I would not be pyramiding right now. I'm, I'm literally just trying to get like any wins that I can. <laughs> um, so anyways, London silver bullet there worked out, and then our drawn liquidity was up here. What I like about the silver bullet model, honestly, I'm going to I'm going to be perfectly honest. I think it's Michael's best model. I think um, all of them work. 
Uh, but the Model 22 is, it comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes, and it doesn't necessarily have a time associated with it. So it's a pure price based model. And so it leads me to over trading. Um, using all of his PD arrays without this time restriction just leads me to over trading. So, and then optimal trade entry, again, is the same thing. I mean, there are so many optimal trade entries that you could easily find yourself over trading and taking losses. So the silver bullet, what I like about it is it's going to limit how often you're trading. I mean, you, you could be trading up to four times. Okay, I'm including an Asian silver bullet, which obviously he doesn't teach. So if you're just teaching what Michael teaches, then three silver bullets. Okay, that's three trades in a day and maybe a couple pyramids on the trade. So maybe you're adding on a couple times. But that should be limiting your trades to, you know, three, which is a reasonable number and um, won't lead you to that decision-making fatigue. So I do think it's his best model. I think it's his best work, and I hope that he does more um, reviews on it. And then obviously it, it has a really high rate of working. It kind of goes without saying. I mean, if you start back testing these silver bullets, they work a lot. So, moving on. Our Asian silver bullet would have been harder to see, but we see that on the Tokyo Stock Exchange Open, there was a displacement lower, traded into a fair value gap, and then it did end up delivering liquidity lower. So that was our Asian silver bullet. Prior to APM silver bullet was pretty, um, this was fairly easy to see. So you can see that we had a, a sell side inefficiency here that price traded into during the setup time, and then we delivered higher. So that beautiful, um, PM delivery on Thursday. AM session Thursday. If you see here, there's a um, fair value gap here. So right there, I'm highlighting it with my cursor. It formed during the setup time. Now I prefer the ones that the inefficiencies that are not forming during the setup time because obviously this would have happened pretty quickly. But in any event, this one was a valid AM silver bullet. You could have gotten in and um, profited on, on that AM silver bullet. London silver bullet was, I mean, this was textbook here on Thursday. Uh, inefficiency coming into the setup time, price trades just above the setup, uh, the fair value gap. I, I probably would have gotten short right around 15,184.50. And then it just shoots just targets that liquidity lower and you can see that our target here our draw on liquidity was down here so price delivered a really really textbook of all the setups this week I think that this one on Thursday's London London silver was absolutely gorgeous now if you would have been greedy and held it all the way to I think this was CPI or some news event you know, holding it all the way through this sort of high resistance here, I, I definitely would not have done that. I would have been looking for these these two lows here and, and gotten 80 points, but theoretically it delivered up to 118 points. I, I, I wouldn't have held it for that long, to be frank. I, I would have held it to um, these lows down here, and that would be 88 points. But this is my new model. I'm going to use this model. It's going to prevent me from overtrading. Um, and if I just use one contract, no pyramiding, not yet, maybe in the future, but not yet, then that should also be limit, limiting my over leveraging. Um, Asian silver bullet. This is um, a little bit difficult to see. Uh, it is in there. There is an inefficiency that happened during the setup time. So I'm using as an Asian silver bullet. Again, he does not teach this. This is my own uh it's using the same principles, right? Which is that the, the Asian stock exchange is open. The Tokyo stock exchange is open at uh, tw 20, 20 hundred, which is 8 o'clock New York local time up until 9 o'clock New York open time or 2100 New York local time. 
This is when the Asian stock exchanges are open, opening. So we're looking for inefficiencies created prior uh, or during the setup time and then price to trade into that inefficiency and then go target liquidity. So it's using the exact same principles, but it's just on the, the Tokyo Stock Exchange open instead of the London or the New York Stock Exchange. So you don't expect the move to be quite as big. But in this case, this Asian silver bullet actually delivered all the way. Um, this was on Thursday. And this delivered uh, like 50 points. Now, what this price move was doing was not necessarily seeking liquidity, although I'm sure that you know on the way you can see that it was generating liquidity that it targeted, but it was also filling back this imbalance over here. But um, yeah, the basic idea is that the setup time is when stock exchanges, uh, Tokyo, London, or New York opens, the opening hour or the PM session. And for New York, New York's going to have two silver bullet times. London's going to have one. I, I've made this one up, but it's using the same principles. So I'm going to say Tokyo has one. Um, you're looking for an inefficiency to be created dur before the setup time. And then you're looking for price to trade or during the setup time. Then you're looking for price to trade into that inefficiency and then go seek liquidity. Now it could be pending orders below a prior low, or as you can see here, price generated liquidity that it attacked once and then two times. So it could do either one. It could either go target resting liquidity or it could generate internal liquidity and then target that, which you can see on this Asian silver bullet, that's exactly what it did. Okay, so we had an inefficiency that price traded back into. It then start it then started trading lower. Then we have a low form, that's gonna form liquidity another low form that's generating liquidity another low form and that's generating liquidity so a three drives pattern on the way down so this Asian silver bullet self generated the, the liquidity it needed to offset distribute the shorts that were accumulated from earlier from resettlement so with this London silver bullet you can see that the resting liquidity it was doing both but the resting liquidity was already there at that 15,000 90 because we had these prior lows so it was generating new liquidity on the way down for sure you can see that um, there was obviously a lot of smart money shorts you can see how much liquidity they had to generate to fully offset their shorts they had to generate a lot of liquidity but there was resting liquidity here whereas with the Asian Asian session silver bullet it had to self generate okay so going on to Wednesday which was FOMC this one was tough to see. Okay, so the PM, I'm using this uh, PM silver bullet. But if we we're on the five minute chart, this was the two step FOMC uh, move lower and then move higher. But if we go to the left, we can actually see that price was trading into this buy side. Um, it traded into this sell side inefficiency over here on the left. Now, whether you would have actually caught that or not, I don't know, but let's say that you found that, that inefficiency to the left. I mean, this thing immediately went up, went, went up and targeted liquidity and could have netted you like 200 points in 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Crazy stuff. Which on one NASDAQ contract, that's $4,000 in 30 minutes. Crazy. Um, on Wednesday, FOMC day, I was looking for it and looking for it. I didn't see an AM silver bullet. It's possible, okay, right there. That would have been difficult to see. But basically, we see that we had an, an a sell side inefficiency formed here that price traded into, and then we targeted liquidity. So I guess I'll remove that. Now this this would have been difficult, okay? I much prefer when the silver bullet's inefficiency is created prior to the setup time because it's it's difficult to see. Um, it's Sometimes it's difficult to see when it's forming like you would have had to have been right on this, you know what I'm saying? Like right on top of it. Because there wasn't really an inefficiency that I could find to the left. And then in terms of, you know, hunting liquidity, 
this this move actually went much further, but we can see that that um, this AM silver bullet that would have been difficult to spot was looking for this drawn liquidity, and then it generated more liquidity to go and and uh, pick up. So, uh, London silver bullet on on FOMC Wednesday. This was referencing a Tuesday, the prior day's inefficiency. Now you would have had to have held drawdown here, okay? So this was a high resistance liquidity run. If you got in on the London silver bullet here using this inefficiency on the left, you're looking at quite a bit of drawdown, but had you held that drawdown, price did end up coming down and delivering a 75 point run. It took a lot of work. It took, um, I think, yeah, this was FOMC day. This was on equities open, this move lower. But had you gotten in and then held drawdown and, and waited through all of this high resistance liquidity run, it did yield 72 points. Okay, but this London Silver Bullet, although it was there, you would have had to have held drawdown and then waited through a lot of um, unclear price action. So not the best Silver Bullet there. Of course, this was FOMC day, so price was sloppy. Um, the reason why, so this was on Tuesday, and this was our Tuesday PM silver bullet. Now, the reason why I didn't have a separate, uh, this is, I'm going back in time, by the way. So this is Tuesday's PM silver bullet. You actually have, uh, now this was kind of a funny revelation, but you had the Tuesday silver bullet and the Wednesday PM silver bullet. Both PM sessions reference the same inefficiency. <laughs> so... The, the silver the, the silver bullet setups were there both times and they both referenced the same inefficiency so two so I just didn't even draw another box but we see this sell side inefficiency that that the Tuesday silver bullet and the Wednesday p.m. silver bullet both referenced and then obviously uh, it only it only wicked down in here and had you gotten in on this Tuesday p.m. silver bullet price was targeting liquidity up here okay so up above these equal highs equal highs there would have been liquidity up here and if you'd gotten in down here that was a hundred points so it turns out that this sell side inefficiency that we see that Tuesday formed was a very important uh, turned out to be a very important inefficiency um, Tuesday's AM silver bullet would have been difficult to see Okay, I have it in the orange box here. It was actually referencing the ex <laughs> again. It was it was referencing the same uh, inefficiency that Tuesday's PM session and Wednesday's PM session both referenced. But it is possible that you would have gotten long on this. Now, this uh, Tuesday AM silver bullet, we can see that price comes in, delivers sell side liquidity, breaks some structure. This is almost a model twenty two. But again, that's not the model that I'm going to be trading for a while. I'm just going to be trading these silver bullets. It is possible you could have gotten long right here, okay, on the orange box, and then targeted liquidity higher. Now, this silver bullet didn't quite deliver. Now, it still would have netted you had you gotten out at a reasonable time, 90 points. But um, this would have been difficult, I think. Uh, this price formed a balanced price range here and then came back and traded into this sell side inefficiency. I think it's possible you could have gotten in here, but it, you you know, I personally don't like the inefficiencies that form during the setup time. I definitely prefer the ones that prefer that come earlier. Uh, but in any event, you could have seen that this was a balanced price range and used this buy side inefficiency to enter or you could have turned around and used the sell side inefficiency to enter or you could have just seen that it was a balanced price range happening during the setup time and then targeted that liquidity higher so you did have an opportunity on Tuesday's AM silver bullet okay the next silver bullet was Tuesday's London silver bullet this was the only quote unquote counter trend one um, as we can see I'm on a, I'm on a three minute chart now um, as price came into the setup time, we had a uh, buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. So that's why I'm calling these sell side inefficiencies. A sell side inefficiency here that I'm highlighting with the cursor. Uh, the London 
open near the London open comes and trades to it and then just kind of immediately targets that 30 points higher so it targets this pool of liquidity here you definitely could have gotten this but but ultimately you can see that uh, during the, the later part of the London session the move was lower now I was looking to see if there was a buy side inefficiency during this that you could have entered in during the setup time and there there isn't so I'm only entering between this hour here the London open hour because that he's very strict about that's the hour that you're entering in on so there was no real opportunity in that hour that I could see to enter in on um, to enter in on a short to get that to get that pre-market move lower um, so that being said if you were using another of ICT's models you, you definitely could have seen that this was a fair value gap and then traded outside of the setup times but if you're purely trading silver bullets the only one you had was this counter trend one that came at um, came during the setup time and then delivered this immediate liquidity right here which again that's that's still 30 points so not not terrible but that one yeah you would have missed out on the big move lower in, in the in the pre-market I believe I don't think and I and I you know maybe you can go back in your charts and see if there was a silver bullet to get you on get you in a cell there but I don't think so um, I think I talked about yeah so this going going forward in time again there was two ways I just wanted to mention this so going back to the Tuesday a.m. silver bullet there was a sell side inefficiency that we formed on Monday that that during the setup time price came back on Tuesday the next day and um, ended up trading into before targeting liquidity higher so you actually could have gotten in on Tuesday's AM silver bullet by using uh, a Monday sell side inefficiency okay so you could have gotten in there and then targeted higher it didn't it drew higher but it, it didn't quite deliver all the way up to uh, the ultimate target now, Asian silver bullet. I'm going to repeat this again for the nth time. This is not Michael's setup. Michael does not teach an Asian session silver bullet. I am merely applying the exact same setup to the Tokyo Stock Exchange Open that he does with London and then New York AM and New York PM. And what is that? That is that during the hour from the open, okay, which for Tokyo would be 8 o'clock Eastern Standard to... 9 o'clock Eastern Standard or 8 o'clock New York time to 9 o'clock New York time that that's the Tokyo open hour you're looking for an inefficiency to have been for to form during the setup time or to have formed prior to the setup time before the setup time and then you're looking for where price should draw on liquidity okay so looking at this Asian session we see that our draw on liquidity was up here Okay, it was at this high. We we're looking at this high. So there was our draw on liquidity. We had an inefficiency that formed a gap. This is actually a volume imbalance. Now, again, one of the things that Michael talks about is that the inefficiencies are all the same to the algorithm. So you could enter in on a silver bullet on a fair value gap, on a volume imbalance, or on a gap. Okay or even potentially on a very long wick they're all inefficiencies that okay that they're all viewed as gaps to the algorithm so this volume imbalance is what I would have used to get long on this Asian silver bullet this volume imbalance right here that I'm highlighting with my cursor and that I have in this yellow box so we can see that during the setup time so we're not entering in the market before Tokyo Stock Exchange opens which is 20 hundred 2000 New York local time. We can see the price trades back into that same volume imbalance. We go long here. We take a minuscule amount of drawdown. And then one of the reasons why I, I came up with the Asian silver bullet is because it delivered 50 points. Okay. Now that's $1,000. <laughs> so, you know, 
and there you have it, right? It ends up delivering 50 points higher. Um, so that's why that's why I came up with the Asian silver bullet. I don't I don't even I just call them silvers. <laughs> I don't even call them silver bullets, just silvers. Um, okay, and then moving back to Monday. Um, Monday, Asian silver. We can see that just prior to the setup time, we had this sell side inefficiency form. During the set, set during the setup time, price trades into the. Um, I call this the Asian silver. This is actually PM silver. I'm sorry. This is PM silver. Um, we had the sell side inefficiency during the setup hour. Um, price comes and trades back into that inefficiency and then targets liquidity much higher, you know, way higher. So if you got in on this PM silver bullet, let's say that you're trading a top step account, you need to be out by the time that the cash session closes, which is 1600. Yeah, you're looking at 80, 80 points, 90 points. Again, that's a lot of money. Um, looking at Monday's AM silver bullet, this is the only one where potentially you could have bent the rules by 10 minutes, or excuse me, six minutes. And if you're not going to bend the rules at all, there was actually an inefficiency uh, to the left that I'm not highlighting, but there was this same inefficiency that London worked off of. The AM silver bullet actually referenced the same one. If you are being hyper strict with this and you are not getting even a minute after the setup hour, you wouldn't have gotten this silver bullet. Okay, This London silver bullet, that same uh, sell side inefficiency, the AM silver bullet actually trades into. Okay, You could have gotten in there as well. Either way, okay, if you're being hyper strict with it, you wouldn't. it didn't actually trade into, well, kind of lying. So I'm making this video, I see that it did. We actually did wick down during the setup time. We wick down to this uh, sell side inefficiency that price formed during the setup hour. Now I prefer, again, I prefer that the inefficiency comes in before the setup hour. Okay, not after the setup hour, or sorry, not during it. But sometimes you're gonna you're gonna end up using an inefficiency that forms during the setup hour. We can actually see here that this was a balance price range that price comes back into one more time and then expands higher. So the AM silver bullet on Monday worked out as well. And then AM London silver bullet, this one was super clean. Okay, sell side inefficiency prior to the setup hour. That's just what I'm saying that I prefer. Okay, I prefer that it comes in before the setup hour, but if it if you only see one that comes in during the setup hour and you still see that there's a liquidity target like there was here, Okay, there was a liquidity target here on this AM silver bullet. No, um, you know, use an inefficiency that forms during the setup hour if that's all you have. London silver bullet was textbook on Monday. Um, it sell side inefficiency before the setup hour. Coming into the setup hour. It trades into that sell side inefficiency. Had you gotten long, let's say at the halfway point of that inefficiency, or even just a tick into it, you take a minuscule amount of drawdown, and then let's just say that you got in a tick on that inefficiency. All right, let's say that you take five points of drawdown, and this thing ends up ripping 48 points higher very cleanly, almost no retracement. So, very, very clean setup there on the London, Monday's London Silver Bullet. And then Asian silver bullet uh, Sunday into Monday. This would have been this would have been difficult to see, but we did have an inefficiency prior to the Tokyo Stock Exchange open. Price trade into it and then delivers a few points lower. Not very much, nine points. So, anyways, going even before that, um, you can see the same uh, principle applied. So this was Friday, June 9th. This was last week's Friday. Um, setup hour for the PM session, New York PM, which is 1400 to 1500. Inefficiency that price had already traded into, but inefficiency here, buy side inefficiency, right here, buy side inefficiency, price trades into it, and then we end up targeting liquidity lower. And had you gotten in here, this would have been 50 points. 
Not bad, not bad. That's a thousand dollars. And then this AM silver bullet on Friday, June the 9th, this would have been a counter trend move. Okay. Um, we see that price had a sell side inefficiency traded back into it during the setup hour and then ended up trading 73 points higher back up to this buy side inefficiency that it got just short of. I don't know if I would have taken this, okay, because ultimately the, the price does end up coming and targeting liquidity lower, but doesn't mean that this setup wasn't valid. It was. And the last one I think I'm going to talk about is this London silver bullet from last Friday. We have an actual gap because this was still when people were trading the June contract. Um, we have an actual gap that you can see here. During the setup hour, London comes in, trades into it, trades a little bit lower. And let's say that you got long here on this silver bullet. You would have had a little bit of retracement, okay? But it ends up trading 80 points higher. So you can see that they virtually all worked. Um, taking four trades a day, some were better than others. Uh, on average, they delivered 80 NASDAQ points crazy. Um, this is going to be the model that I'm going to be using from this point forward because I have a problem over trading. I have a um, compulsion to want to be in the market at all times. So this model should keep me to a limited number of trades per day. And then if I stack that on with um, under leveraging, that should keep me out of trouble. So this is uh, what I'm going to be using going forward. So this has been uh, a review of ICT silver, uh, silver bullet model setups for the week of June 12th to June 16th. I will be back with you uh, Monday or Tuesday, and I, you know, this is if if you are trading ICT silver bullets, I wish you the best of luck. Um, to me, they seem to be his best model. I, in my opinion. And so that is what uh, I hope that he focuses more on in the future and um, should keep me out of trouble, I think. All right. Bye-bye.